Let's go in and find the warm. Oh yeah, it's warm. Who needs to see a Cortez when you've got British Columbia in the summer? Last time aboard Freedom, we made our usual checks before kicking off summer cruising in one of the world's most impressive boating destinations, British Columbia, Canada. After a long day of cruising across the US-Canada border via the San Juan Islands, we cleared customs in Poets Cove and continued northbound. With an improving weather forecast, we decided it might be best to continue cruising into the night to get across the Strait of Georgia and into Desolation Sound as soon as possible but not before having to deal with a little kerfuffle shortly after midnight when the forecasted winds finally arrived. Uh, freedom on three. Hey, how's your night going there, Cap? Uh, it's going well out with yours. Not bad. I just wonder if I can get a little weather check up you there. Up the swell. Uh, mostly just wind wave. Uh, winds out of the west. We have about 15 knots sustained, uh, gusting to 20, 25 at times. flat calm out here too until about 30 minutes ago and then it picked up quick. Right on, okay, huh? I think I made the right call and turn it around. I got a bit of a log tow behind me, so I'm trying to head to Vancouver, but I shouldn't risk it yet. Gotcha. Well, have a good night, Cap. Uh, freedom switching back in Monterey General 1-6. Roger that. Thanks again. Eventually, the wind and waves got to be a bit much for our liking, so once we felt that sound that no boater wants to hear, a thump on the hull and a slight engine rattle above 1800 RPM, we decided it might be best to call it a night and duck into safe harbor in nearby Secret Cove. Bumps and weird engine noises can often be the end of a trip, so we were really hoping for the best. Once we set the anchor, we check the main engine prop as well as the rudder and wing engine prop to see if anything looked dinged up or possibly if any debris got lodged in places it shouldn't be. Thankfully, with a GoPro and a waterproof light, gave us a pretty clear view under the boat so that Sean didn't have to go diving at 3 a.m. All looked good, so it appeared that we dodged a bullet. Maybe we hit something and it eventually got dislodged, or maybe backing into reverse while we set the anchor helped to dislodge anything that might have been caught on the prop. Good morning from Secret Cove. Uh, we pulled in here at 1.30 in the morning last night, which we do not recommend. <laughs> it was, the wind was blowing. Luckily, the anchorage wasn't too full. So we anchored for the night, got to bed at 3.30. It's now nine uh, and we're gonna head up um, and see how far we can make it. The wind forecast right now just looks like crap. Um, every buoy that we're looking at, some things close to here look okay and then you know you go like five miles north and it looks horrible so we're gonna see we're gonna head out 
Uh, Sean's pulling up the anchor. We're gonna head out and see what the day brings. Uh, it's a beautiful day otherwise, besides the wind. So if you're not on the water today, it's a, it's a great day. So we'll see where we, we'll see where we land. Eight hours is supposed to be our, our, our ideal itinerary. Eight hours will get us into desolation. Uh, or not two hours, we'll be in Pender and then we'll wait it out, go to the grocery store maybe. Hey, grocery store, produce. And then we'll, we'll head up to Desolation tomorrow maybe. Today was yet another reminder that the many wind and wave forecast models we use to plan our itineraries are just that, a prediction. And sometimes predictions are way off, like today. And sometimes you just have to go with your gut, leave safe harbor, and see where Mother Nature allows you to go. elbow and you don't play tennis. Uh, Do you want to show everybody your elbow? <laughs> Here, give it, give, oh. Oh, <laughs> it's not that bad. It could be worse. It'll probably get worse. <laughs> yeah. Sean, what do you think of the ride today compared to yesterday? Um, what part of yesterday? Yesterday morning? Yesterday afternoon? Just in general, how does today feel? So we had a mixed bag. That's good. That's fine. Yeah. It'd be nice if there was zero wind, but... Well, you can't have everything. You can't have everything. <laughs> I actually feel like it might be flattening out a little. I know. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Better than expectation. Conditions continue to improve on today's 53 nautical mile journey north into Desolation Sound, a deep water sound at the northern end of the Salish Sea on BC's Sunshine Coast. Desolation is bound by Cortez Island, East Redonda Island, and West Redonda Island. Adjacent waterways include the Lewis Channel to the northwest, the Waddington Channel to the northeast, Humphrey Channel to the east, Okeover Inlet to the southeast, and the Strait of Georgia to the south. As we approached, we were reminded why this region is so popular amongst boaters and why it's commonly considered some of the best, if not the best cruising ground in all of North America. The surrounding islands and coastline are absolutely breathtaking and the water temps here can exceed 70 degrees Fahrenheit during the summer months. Surprisingly though, Desolation got its name in 1792 when explorer George Vancouver claimed that, quote, there was not a single prospect that was pleasing to the eye. Well, George, we would have to respectfully disagree. Woohoo! Squirrel Co! Straight ahead! Finally made it!
good morning from Desolation Sound, actually Squirrel Cove, which is one of our favorite coves. Today we're going to go explore on the dinghy and see what we find, uh, get some provisions with fresh stuff that we weren't allowed to bring into Canada, um, and then just check the, check the place out. We haven't been here since we had our old boat, our Sea Ray Orca. Um, it was probably 2017, I think, that we were here, and it's actually really kind of sad, uh, and, you know, I don't know if sad. Yeah, it's sad. Because <laughs> the last time we were here, Sandy was with us and she loved this cove. There's a couple islands in the middle of the anchorage that we would swim her to and she would run around and swim back to the boat and she'd wake up in the morning and swim and it was just such a happy time. But anyway, uh, we're going to get the dog suited up and go on the dinghy and start exploring. Uh, it's a beautiful day. It's a little breezy today. Uh, if we go to Refuge Cove, it might be a little choppy. Um, but starting tomorrow, for the foreseeable future, we have great winds, so we'll be very flexible on where we can go and when, and we won't be too uh, stuck on, you know, the wind forecast. We'll have a little more freedom to kind of cruise into places that we want, and not be held back. And there's also this really interesting thing that we've been staring at on shore, which appears to be a shipwreck. So since the tide's lowering, we're going to go over there and see uh, what it's all about. Are you going to make it? <laughs> Yeah, are you guys gonna make it? Oh my Do goodness. You go yeah, you wanna go to shore and go for a walk? Oh, yeah. oh, oh my goodness. Someone's gotta go. What are you trying to tell us, Martha? You're excited? Well, we found the shipwreck, and uh, dinghy included. included, deflated, of course. What do you think, Sean? Does that have potential? Yeah, Although it's wood, I don't think I want to whip it up. Yeah, I would say at, at this rate, it's probably a goner. Located on the eastern shores of Cortez Island, Squirrel Cove not only offers a great protected anchorage, but there's also a convenient public dock with ample space for dinghies if you want to get on land and stretch the legs. This dock, however, should not be confused with the private dock located at the entrance into the anchorage. And if you arrive here at low tide, which is not recommended, be ready for a steep climb up to the main dock. Oh buddy, he go. <laughs> this is steep. Oh, wow, this is definitely <laughs> low tide. It's dangerous. Oh my God. Oh my goodness gracious. Oof. It's definitely not ADA compliant. And look at what they have. They have books, a little library. Ooh, Jody Picoult, love her. Good selection. Nice to know. Well, if you come all this way and you forgot your books, there you go. Good selection at the little book library here on the dock. Wow. Ooh. Oh my gosh, so many oysters. Yum oh. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, there's little things under there. And we got another dried up starfish here. This one looks kind of dead, but I have no idea. Very cool. At low tide, all sorts of interesting critters appear. The Squirrel Cove Public Dock not only offers access to books and some cool sea creatures, but also to the general store with groceries, liquor, and a post office, fuel and water, and a quiet road that winds around to a relaxing spot overlooking Protection Island. If you like to track your activity like we do, 
This walk will get you about 8,000 steps. God, the tide went down even further. That is like, oh my gosh, like a 45 degree angle. Ooh, that's gonna be a dangerous walk back to the dinghy. Yeah, are you, do you feel okay doing it? We made it. We survived the Squirrel Cove ramp. Could have been real ugly. How many people uh, don't survive? Oh, yeah. So, how'd you like that ram? That's what I thought. to Refuge Cove. Bye buddy, sorry we had to leave you guys behind. Oh, he's in the window. To get some much needed produce. Yes. Do you have a list? No, but I'll know. Yeah. Produce and ice cream. And ice cream. <laughs> Just the bare necessities. That's right. We might need to sell Freedom and get a sauna house. Okay. Buy a property, just put a shack on it and a sauna. That's all you need. That's true. Okay, okay, don't get too excited. We would never sell Freedom to get a sauna house, but it sure is fun to think about. Tucked in across the Lewis Channel on the southern tip of West Redonda Island is Refuge Cove, the only community in Desolation Sound. It serves as a centrally located supply stop for boaters and local fishermen traveling in or near the area, offering moorage, fuel, trash pickup, groceries, ice, showers, laundry, a cafe and restaurant, more books, boat supplies, and seaplane services. Hello, Sean. Can you hear me? It doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. The general store, which is open year-round, as is the fuel dock, has quite a lot. In fact, it has most everything a boater could want or need, including freshly scooped ice cream. Good? Tasty? Bye-bye. No, thanks. <laughs> Probably cut that. Water feels amazing. I just swam to uh, that island and back. Very refreshing. Rocks were nice and warm with the little beetle bugs next to me. Uh, not so great. But yeah, beautiful day in the Anchorage. And this is why people come to swim. Did you find the warm pack yet? And it's nice over there. Okay. Ooh, that's where we're going. 
Let's go in and find the warm. Oh yeah, it's warm. Who needs to see a Cortez when you've got British Columbia in the summer? Hopefully, uh, Sully and Martha stay on the boat. Whew. Oh yeah, it's definitely over 70. Who needs that swimming pool? croutons. Maybe the best part of the salad. <laughs> What's the ETA on the chicken thighs? About 16 minutes. 16 minutes. Okay. I better get started here. Whew. Oh, and the dressing we are actually going to use a vegan Caesar. You can use anything you want. This is one of our favorites. So yeah, here we go. Bob's your uncle. Best chicken salad we've ever had. Got chicken, got salad, got plates. Let's eat. Would you like to go first? Nope. Chef's first. I always feel bad. No, that's okay. Salad. You're supposed to just dive in. Don't don't care if it looks, you know. Bottom. Yeah, what's your strategy? I kind of go in from the bottom and not screw up the top too bad. And then I look at what I got and look at what I'm missing. But then I uh, go in for the chicken. Yum. That's a salad. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notifications so you won't miss next time when we continue our journey north to see some new places, fix some boat problems, and leave our mark in the most unique of places. We'll see you next time.